All right, let's get into this Mulan real quick. $30. No, I ain't gonna cut it. I'll be right back. All right, let's see. Got some here. Two dollars, three dollars, four fifty. All right, welcome to Tate's Take. If you're new here, I do movie and TV reviews. Give you a little background, basically let you know if I think it's worth checking out or not. If that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button for your boy. For my regular Tate's Takers, let's see if this thing is worth refinancing your mortgage. Mulan is the latest live action adaptation from Disney. We all know about the 1998 Disney animated Mulan, but the story of Mulan is actually one that goes back centuries. The Ballad of Mulan actually dates back to the sixth century, which let's put that in perspective for a second. That means the story of Mulan is over a thousand years older than the United States. That's crazy. Basically, if you grew up with any Chinese upbringing, you learned the story of Mulan. Most Americans learned about Mulan in 1998 when Disney made their version of it. And high key, I rewatched it this week because I totally forgot what happens in that movie. That version of Mulan was pretty well received and pulled in about $300 million globally. It's not as much as some of the other OGs like Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin and Lion King, but it's still respectable, especially since they didn't get much help from China because China low-key be hating. Basically, China had beef with Disney over another movie they just released that China thought was too political. So by the time Mulan came around, Disney thinking, all right, we about to make bank over there. Freaking China doesn't release it for a whole year. And what happens in China after a whole year with no theatrical release? Bootlegs, duh. So by the time that thing finally dropped, all the Chinese people were like, Mulan? Oh no, nah, I got that at the barbershop. There was also some Chinese backlash because they thought that Mulan didn't look very Chinese. That's fair. But they also thought it was weird that Mulan was shown cutting her hair before she went to battle because back then, the men actually grew their hair out. Nah, I just think they was being picky. Regardless, this time around, Disney made some moves to try to right those wrongs. The live action Mulan was actually announced way back in 2010. It was supposed to be directed by Charles Russell and have Zhang Ziyi star as Mulan. You guys may know her from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, but I more affectionately know her from Rush Hour 2. You know what? I don't even know why the hell I'm even here. I ain't even Chinese. <laughs> All right, I'm- Anyway, that idea fell through and it never happened. Fast forward to the last couple years, and we got this version. This Mulan was directed by Nikki Carroll from New Zealand. She doesn't have a whole lot of projects that y'all would know, but super randomly, the other day I watched McFarlane USA, and for some reason it had me in my feelings. And she did that, so she cool with me. The budget for Mulan was over $200 million, which was the highest film budget ever directed by a woman. You go, girl. Mulan is played by Liu Yi Fei, and since Disney already knew China was going to come with the hate, they made sure to find the right woman. In October of 2016, they went on a global casting hunt that included five different continents and over 1,000 women to find Lou. Can you imagine what a flex that is when you get that job? Oh, y'all oh, y'all didn't get this? Oh, it was, it was a thousand of y'all? Oh, okay. You, if you just got to work hard, you can be Mulan. <laughs> you too can be Mulan if you work hard. So Disney was probably like, all right, nice. She's Chinese. She knows martial arts. We good. Nah, y'all not good. See, y'all don't do petty like how China do petty. Cause Lu showed her support for the Hong Kong police. People said she supported police brutality. <laughs> okay. Anyway, then the Chinese said they're gonna break out the movie. Ugh. Then in Variety magazine, she described herself as Asian as opposed to Chinese. And you guessed it, the Chinese threatened to boycott. <laughs> like, you can't win. Is she, she not Asian? Anyway. We'll see if they're really about that life. Disney Plus is not available in China, but Disney's having a Chinese theatrical release of Mulan on September 11th, which we should boycott China for releasing a movie on September 11th any damn way. Huh? Is it Friday? All right, never mind. but still. Disney is, however, getting props for the all Chinese cast in this version. Some of the notable actors, Donnie Yen, who's one of the most famous martial arts actors on the planet. He's also in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, but he's more so known for his roles in Ip Man. Then we got Jason Scott Lee, who played Bruce Lee in the Bruce Lee story. They're not related, though. I don't think. Tai Ma. You know that's the homie more formally known as Council Han. More formally known as Si Young's dad in Rush Hour. 
What's up, man? You a legend. He plays Mulan's father here. And of course, we got Jet Li. The man needs no introduction. If you work with Aaliyah, you're pretty much good for life. As I've said before, to unlock Mulan, it is an additional $30 on top of your regular monthly or yearly subscription. But after you unlock it, you do have access to watch it as much as you want. They also recently announced that they'll be releasing Mulan for no additional fee on December 4th, which is kind of crazy because they released Mulan for money on Beyonce's birthday then you can get Mulan for free on Jay-Z's birthday. That's Illuminati. Hmm. All right, plot time. Mulan is a story that takes place in 15th century China where the Imperial Army is facing an attack from Northern invaders. The Emperor's like, all right, we ain't going out like no punks. So every family got to send one man to fight in this battle to defend the land. The problem is when they get to Mulan's family, it's only her and her little sister. So her father would have to step up and fight this fight. But he's super old and totally not in any condition to be fighting in a war. Mulan's like, nah, I can't have my dad go out there. He's gonna be the first one to get murked off. So she takes his sword, his armor, and his horse and disguises herself as a man so she can join and fight this fight. All while trying to make sure that no one knows her true identity. And now we got a movie. So what's my take? I'll talk about what I liked first, then what I didn't like. Finally, I'll get into this whole $30 thing. First positive about this movie is the cast. That damn global search for Mulan definitely paid off. She's gotta be the best like starring role for all the Disney live actions. She's better than Belle in Beauty and the Beast. She's better than that dude who played in Aladdin who's like complaining about stuff now. And she's better than Nala in The Lion King. I have to add that part. I gotta do better. One difference between this Mulan and the 98 cartoon is that back then, Mulan didn't really know how to fight when she joined the army and the whole group was like getting whipped into shape, obviously to the groovy tune of I'll make a man out of you. In this version, Mulan was already a badass from a young age, so I like that she was already joining the group as one of the best soldiers. Again, the whole cast is pretty much fire, but another casting shout out goes to Donnie Yen. I really don't watch a lot of, or like pretty much any martial arts movies. Wait, does Ninja Turtles count? They're ninjas. Anyway, the point is, I don't know much about Donnie Yen, but Disney had a huge pickup with that one, and when you see how he trains the soldiers, You'll see why. Next positive is on the production side. The locations are dope. The costumes are dope. They'll probably win some awards for that. The action scenes, like it just all looks really well done. And speaking of the action scenes, for a Disney movie, it actually does have a lot of action, which kind of makes sense why it's PG-13, but you could just tell that they got like real martial artists to like do the sequences, cause it's legit. In a COVID world where I've been watching so much content on Netflix, I just miss these blockbuster size productions. And you can tell that they spent every penny of that 200 milli. That actually brings me to the first thing I didn't like about this movie. I didn't like that I had to watch it on Disney Plus. This movie is too big to be exclusively on Disney Plus. I know some people are gonna try and do it up at home with the big screen and the surround sound, but there's also gonna be some people that just pull this up on their laptop. It's like if Beyonce released a new album and you just played it off your phone. See, with a little bit of hate, you get a little bit of love. It's balance. <laughs> anyway, in regards to the actual movie, I missed having Mushu the dragon from the 98 movie. And like I said, I just rewatched it this week and I totally forgot that Eddie Murphy was in it playing Mushu the dragon. He was like donkey before donkey, who knew? The truth is the Chinese hold dragons in such high regard that they were upset when Disney made Mushu so small and wimpy and just used for comic relief. So out went Mushu. I know that Nikki Carroll, the director wanted this movie based more on realism, but even if Mushu was an actual sidekick soldier, I would have liked that too. Someone funny along the way that knew her secret. It reminds me of how great Ned has been in the new Spider-Man movies, and I think that really could have worked here. The new live-action Lion King movie had its own issues, but the comic relief from Timon and Pumbaa was elite. This movie could have used some of that. There's also no singing in this movie. Now, I don't think I put Mulan in the top tier of the Disney movies like Lion King and Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, but it always got love for the soundtrack. In this one, you're gonna have to settle for the instrumental versions of some of those classics. Personally, I really didn't mind that there wasn't any singing in this movie, but what I do know is that if I don't get that part of your world in the new live action Little Mermaid, I'm challenging Lin-Manuel Miranda to a duel on sight. I'm gonna give Mulan three and a half stars. The reviews that I've seen so far seem very split, where the women are in love with it and the men think it's boring. I guess I'm in the middle of them, but I'm definitely leaning more towards the women because I really don't think this movie was boring. There were some cheesy parts towards the end, but even though it's PG-13, it's still a Disney movie. And when it comes to Disney movies, the number one thing is the message. In Mulan, the verbal message is loyalty of country and devotion to family. But the undertone message is female empowerment and how you can never really achieve greatness if you aren't true to yourself. I'm all for it. So Tate, you gonna tell us if it's worth $30 or not? 
Like, is any damn movie worth $30? <laughs> I mean, in all seriousness, you can make the case that it is. This is a family movie, and we're all pretty much stuck at home. How much would it cost a family of four to go watch this movie? That's 60 bucks. And I'm talking before the nachos, before the ices. And for the $30 here, you can watch as much as you want. You can't take your ticket stuff back to the movies and tell them to run it back. I think Mulan is definitely worth the watch. But just be clear that this has a different feel than the 98 cartoon. And as long as you're cool with seeing a different take on it, which is actually a take that's more closely aligned to the original Ballad of Mulan, then you're sure to enjoy this one. As always, thanks for checking out Tate's Take. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like and that subscribe button. In the comments, let me know what's been your favorite Disney live action movie so far. You got like Jungle Book, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King, uh, Mulan. I'm probably forgetting some. Does Alice in Wonderland count? I, let me know what you, what you think. Thanks for the time, y'all. Peace.